Okay, so um, this is the uh, next lecture in module two, atomic structures and uh, electronic configurations. And so uh, again, lay of the land, uh, last module was on how atoms are arranged in solid materials. This module is on how electrons are arranged in atoms. So we went from atoms to how electrons are arranged in atoms. So the arrangement of electrons is called electronic configuration. This module is about electrons in individual atoms. The next module is on electrons in solid materials. So we'll talk about discrete energy levels in this module, energy bands in the next one. So we were talking about the atomic spectra. We talked about the Bohr model of the atom. Uh, and then we got into talking about wave particle duality. There were some aspects of um, there are some aspects of light that we could explain with wave-like behaviors, so things like traveling waves and diffraction, and there were other things like the photoelectric effect, which could only be explained by um, looking at light as a particle. And then right at the end of class, we talked about the de Broglie uh, wavelengths, the de Broglie equation, which relates wave-like and particle-like behavior. Okay, so I want to start with that today. Uh, we're going to go right ahead to... <clears throat> to that section. Okay, really quickly here. Uh oh. So when we think about the wave like behavior of a particle, we think about like a, a traveling wave given by this equation here. We're still on the notebook. You can see the slide. Oh, really? Okay. So let me. Okay. Oh, I see what happened there. Thank you. All right. Now, are you able to see it? Uh, yes, thanks. Okay. <laughs> so, so just do the quick recap again. Last time in class, we, we started talking about the, um, the Bohr model of the atom, and then we started talking about um, this, this concept of wave, uh, wave particle duality. So there are, there are some aspects of light, um, the behavior of light and the behavior of electrons and neutrons and other particles. Some, sometimes they behave like a wave, sometimes they, they behave like a particle. So there's this concept of wave particle duality. So examples of uh, where they're um, behaving like a wave, we think about uh, a traveling wave. So A of sine of Kx minus omega t, um, so examples of where light, for example, behaves as a wave. Light is electromagnetic radiation and it occurs in all different portions of this electromagnetic spectrum. So um, there's a, we use radio waves, for example, electromagnetics in the, um, with wavelengths in the kilo, kilometer regime. We use that for radio communications. And then on the other side, there's the wavelengths can be as little as uh, one picometer. That's gamma ray radiation. Um, other aspects, uh, waves can uh, undergo interference. So there's single slit diffraction, double slit diffraction, uh, which shows interference patterns uh, that occur when two waves interact. So these, can, these phenomena can be explained by the wave-like nature of light. Electron diffraction can as well. Uh, then we talked about gravitational potential energy and electrical potential energy last time. Um, and we basically like the, the we're, we're basically looking at this in terms of classical physics. And some of the key aspects of classical physics is that a particle has potential energy and it has kinetic energy. And we looked at two examples of where a particle accelerates. One, one example was a gravitational field. The other example was an electrical potential energy field. In both cases, the particle accelerates. Um, and so that potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. In the electrical case, there's something called electrical potential energy, which has to do with the voltage that's applied between these two plates and um, the particle is accelerated and that potential energy is converted to kinetic. We did some examples of that. We talked about the photoelectric effect, which is where um, light, um, light, when you think about light as a particle, we think about it as a photon and that photon has a particle-like behavior. If you imagine the photon like hitting uh, metal, um, it has to have enough momentum, it has to have enough energy, I should say, it has to have enough energy in order to knock out an electron. So this experiment uh, showed that um, uh, the amount of energy required to knock off an electron is equal to the work function of the metal. And we're gonna talk a lot about work functions when we get to um, 
uh, uh, metal semiconductor junctions. All right, so uh, we left off here last time, the de Broglie wavelength. Okay, as I mentioned last time in class, this, this was a very important relationship. The equation itself is deceptively simple. Uh, one minute, please. I'm gonna turn down this fan here. Okay, apologize if that was a little noisy in the back. So um, this turned out to be a very important relationship in um, those that laid the foundation for uh, modern physics. And it was an equation that related the de Broglie wavelength to, uh, to the velocity of a particle. Okay, the, the way we think about it, the way that I like to think about it is that a particle that's moving at a certain velocity has an equivalent wavelength. So that means that moving particle is behaving as a particle, but it also has a wavelength. So it can behave as a wave as well. So this, it really brings in this wave uh, particle duality concept. Okay, so what does this equation look like? Wavelength is equal to H over the momentum, Planck's constant divided by the momentum. And the momentum of a particle is P equals MV. So um, uh, the de Broglie's equation is just a de Broglie wavelength is equal to H over MV. Okay, uh, and um, I this, uh, just wanna introduce this concept of wave number as well. Wave number is two pi divided by the wavelength. Um, it's inversely proportional to the wavelength. And so if we wanna put momentum in terms of the wave number, P is equal to H over lambda. And so then uh, you can solve and it's um, equal to H times K, where H, this is Planck's constant with a little bar across it, is equal to H over two pi. Okay, so a couple of the examples, um, I anyway, asked you to do some of these examples in uh, as homeworks. So did anyone find the de Broglie wavelengths of the bullet and then the de Broglie wavelength of the electron? Yes, but I oh, have great. to go grab my notebook. <laughs> sure, yeah, no worries. A anyone else? Okay. Yeah, Corey, we can wait wait a minute for you. I'm curious to see if you ended up getting the same one, getting the same answer. Uh, the reason we're doing this one, by the way, is so you can see that both objects actually do have a de Broglie wavelength but one is just so, so small that it couldn't possibly be measured or, or useful. So Corey, let me know um, if you're able to find it. And if not, that's also yeah. okay. Yeah, so I found uh, my notebook. Um, the, for the bullet, I found that the de Broglie wavelength for that was 9.47 and then um, basically times 10 to the negative 33 meters. Yeah, that's that's uh, about right. Yeah, you, you actually are right on here. Yeah. So great. So you plugged in um, Planck's constant up at the top. Mm -hmm. Mass of the object, the bottom here, and then yep. a velocity 10 meters per second. Yep. Great. So uh, I just want to point out a few things about that when you're doing this types of problems, there are different forms of uh, Planck's constant, okay? Um, so the version that we're going to be using for these types of problems is the one that's in the MKS system. So look for the units of Planck's constant meter squared kilograms per second. 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34. Uh, for the mass, again, we're using MKS units, meters, kilograms, seconds. So we put seven times 10 to the negative three kilograms for the mass and the velocity is 10 meters per second. So when we look at this number that we get, the de Broglie wavelength is an extremely small number. 10 to the negative 33 is, uh, let's put it this way. Like if you just remind ourselves here where, what we're talking about in terms of uh, units, I'm just gonna jump back here. Um, 10 to the negative 12 is the scale of atomic nuclei. So 10 to the negative 33 would be 20 orders of magnitude smaller than atomic nuclei. So it's, it's kind of an absurdly small number. 
So that's why, you know, like when we think of everyday moving objects, like a car or a bullet, like, you know, like macro scale things, the, the de Broglie wavelength basically doesn't mean anything. They might have an associated de Broglie wavelength, but they don't really exhibit much wave-like behavior because th their de Broglie wavelengths are essentially like negligible. Okay, so a bullet or a car, you know, these things would exhibit more particle-like behavior. They probably wouldn't exhibit properties like diffraction and, um, you know, constructive interference and things like that. On the other hand, if we if we do the electron, I'm wondering, did, is anyone in the class, um, uh, Corey, I appreciate it, maybe we'll come back to you, but is, is anyone in the class able to calculate the de Broglie wavelength of the electron? No, no one is no one is able to get that. Okay, um, did did folks just not have time, or was this a tricky problem? I just want to make sure I understand. Uh, me, I actually forgot to do it. I forgot that we had that homework in here. Okay, okay. All right. Well, I'll make sure I uh, mention it more clearly next time then. Um, Sorry and, and that's that. okay. No, no, no worries. It's all right. No worries. Um, I know you guys had the homework due as well today, so uh, no big deal. Um, so the de Broglie wavelength of the electron at 1000 electron volts. So when we specify the energy of an electron, we often talk about uh, these units called electron volts. And this uh, uh, unit of energy, one electron volt is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. Now I know this is often a point of confusion for students, electron volt. Volt is a unit of electrical potential. And um, that has a units of volts. <laughs> um, so electron volt is not the same thing as, um, as electrical potential. Electron volt is actually a unit of energy. It's derived from the voltage, but it's a unit of energy. So in one electron volt is uh, um, if you take a single electron and you put it in a one volt potential, that's the amount of potential energy that electron would have. Okay, it's just a smaller unit for uh, energy. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 joules is one electron volt. Uh, so when we create electrons, we create electrons from something called an electron gun. And that electron gun, we can specify how many electron volts um, will, will generate that electron. Okay, so we can specify the energy. That's why the reason why we say um, an electron at 1000 EV. Okay, so the first thing we do is we convert the energy to a velocity. The energy is like how much we put into it in our electron gun, but we actually want to see first how fast that electron is physically moving. So there's the classical uh, uh, equation here for kinetic energy, E equals mv squared over 2. Uh, 